Hi guys, my name is Kathy, live with Kathy on Instagram. Thank you so much for being here. I absolutely love the movie because it was like walking right back into the 80s with the mixtape and the crimped hair and the, um, the cassette. So Gemma, I wanted to know, since clearly you weren't born in the 80s, how did you feel about the crimped hair and the cassette? And did you, the tape, when you pulled it out and the tape had um, come apart, that was a true struggle for us. Did you fully under grasp what we would have cried if that happened to us when we were kids? How did you feel about that? How did you feel about stepping into the 80s? Oh, yes. I felt so incredible. I had listened to all of this 90s music with my mom and my, my Mariah Carey, my Whitney Houston, my Celine Dion, and all of the fashion from the 90s is coming back now, too. So stepping back into that was so fun. And I had always wished that I was born in that era, to be honest. Like, I belong there. And now I know why I was born here so I could do this movie. Um, so I'm very glad and I couldn't, um, if I could have picked an era, I definitely would have been the nineties, hundred percent. Thank you so much. Yeah. Donna. Hi. Movie was great as an eighties person, nineties. It was just so much fun reliving all of that. So my question was, both of you were fantastic. And my question, Julie, uh, what was your favorite part about going back in time and kind of getting to like relive some of the parts that, what were the greatest parts, I guess, for you? Um, well, I loved, I think that in the, in the nineties that the Pacific Northwest was sort of the Mecca of, of arts and culture, uh, everything, everybody wanted to be in Seattle in a garage somewhere. And so getting to sort of play that we were in the Pacific Northwest, we were in Vancouver, which is the Pacific Northwest. That was pretty fantastic. And also just doing scene after scene of, of a movie with no cell phones. Um, <laughs> there was no, there was no like, it, it just didn't play a role in, in that time. And that's accurate. And you had to go drive to see the person or pick up the phone connected with the curly cord to the wall. Um, I loved getting caught. There was one scene where I get caught in the curly cord in the wall. And, and that was so real. The hours you would spend just like twisting and untwisting it. That's very nostalgic for me. Right. Thank you. Tessa. Hi guys, Tessa with mamasgeeky.com and I super appreciate you ladies taking the time today. I thought the movie was a ton of fun, but I'd love to know what drove you guys to want to be a part of this movie and we can start with you, Julie. Um, thank you so much. Well, first of all, I, I was lucky enough to spend 11 years playing one person, uh, Claire Dunphy, and I love her and I know people love her, but but I, I also love being an actor and get to try on different people. And this was a real departure. Uh, you know, yes, yeah, she's a grandmother, she's a young grandmother, but she's, you know, going through a lot of grief and loss and is not somebody who wants to talk about it. And for me, not talking is a huge challenge. So I, I kind of wanted to try on, try on some different stuff in the acting world. Karen? Hi, thanks for um, spending some time with us. I'm Karen from Rock and Mama. I absolutely love the film. I also grew up in the 80s and 90s. So um, one of the things that really struck me about the film was the relationship between, you know, a grandmother and her, um, her granddaughter. And I wanted to see if you could maybe talk a little bit about that and why that is such a special relationship and what families like who watch the film may gain from that. Um, well, for me, I think that this was an interesting relationship because it's not one I've ever seen before. Uh, Gail, my character had a daughter and who was more of almost sort of a peer because they were both so young, kind of a Gilmore's, Gilmore girls sort of a relationship, but that went wrong. Um, she felt that it's her fault that her, her daughter died because she had been too uh, relaxed. And so now with her own granddaughter, she's really tightening the screws and is very, very controlling about everything she does and is very worried about her safety. Um, but still, it is a relationship. It's really a parental relationship in the end. Um, I think that bridging the divide, though, between generations, whether it's one or two generations, is really important. I wasn't that close to my grandmothers, both of them. And this made me a little bit bummed about that. I wanted to 
find out more about them. Um, they've passed, so I don't have that opportunity, but I hope that people watch this and then go, hey, did you do that? What was it like for you? How was that? Um, just anything that opens up that conversation is good. Carolina. Hi, I'm Carolina from What C Says. Thank you both so much for being here. Um, Julie, you touched a little bit about it um, as far as this movie being about kind of um, dealing with grief. And so what, for people, for the audience out there who's watching this and who's probably dealing with something like this, um, what, do you, what do you want them to take from this film? Thank you. Mm. And, you know, our director, Valerie, and I talked a lot about grief going into it. And we were sharing books and she was sending me this book about, um, the long tail of grief and that grief is not something that it's not, a, it's not a straight shot. You don't go from A to Z in a perfect order. You kind of zig and zag and certain things can set you off years later that didn't set you off a week ago. Um, understanding that grief is kind of like its own living monster that uh, it doesn't just go away, I think is the most important thing. Cause that's the, probably the best way to get over it is to accept it. Um, and accept that it's going to blow up at you when you least expect it. And then there's other times when you're just going to laugh at the things that used to make you cry. It's a weird, weird monster. I have a whole grief shelf now. <laughs> Amanda. Hi, I'm Amanda from Guide for Moms and Crazy Amanda Reacts on YouTube. And my question was for Gemma. You know, you worked with the great Julie Bowen, award-winning. <laughs> I just wondered, you know, how it was like working for it and if you learned anything from her. Oh, yes. It was amazing working with Julie. She's the best first movie partner I could have asked for. And she was a fantastic, very young grandma. Um, and um, she never failed to make anyone laugh. And she... I mean, she's hilarious and super sweet and super bubbly. And we always had a great time. And I think I learned, um, you know, to not take myself too seriously and also um, a lot of things on set. And one weird thing that I learned on set was when you go to the restroom, it's called, um, I'm going to go 10-1, right? I think it was 10-1. 10-1. So random. Nobody says 10 2, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Um, she learned a lot of swear words. Let's be honest. I have a potty mouth. I'm not proud of it. She, she rolled with the punches and I apologize. No, I don't, I don't remember you swearing at all. I think you were, you were very good about that. Mm. You haven't heard my mom in the car. So I feel like <laughs> you should be good. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> Kathy? Julie, it's so funny that you said about that phone cord. I remember that vividly. Was there, I really like the fact, this is going to sound really bizarre, that you didn't have a love interest in the movie. I really, really love the fact that it was, the movie was really just based on you and Gemma and what you were going through and what she was going through. What, what similarities do you share with your character? Uh, well, I too am retired from dating. Um, <laughs> as I am, as I am as well. I, I got myself a dog as my retirement from dating gift. Um, Cause that, that assures that you're never spending a night out. You gotta come home for the dog. Um, I, although I would have to say, I think Gail at the end, it might be a little something there with Nick Thune's character. And by the way, Nick is really easy on the eyes. That was, He's so a, handsome. Mm -hmm. He really mm -hmm. is so handsome. Thank God he has a girlfriend, uh, <laughs> Belle, whom I adore and know in real life. So he was strictly out of policy, but easy on the eyes. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Donna. Hi. I never said earlier, I'm from Dangerous Cupcake Lifestyle, too. I got so into my question, I forgot to ask <laughs> or say that. Um, Gemma, what was your favorite song? I loved as you were going through the mixtape and, and looking at the songs and figuring things out. And I was just curious, which one of them was your favorite song in the end? Oh boy, this is like the hardest question ever. I I would say I love Better Things because it's such a positive song. And like, you know, I think a lot of people can relate to it because you'll always find better things, you know? And it came in like the perfect timing in the movie. I love Teacher's Pet and Getting Nowhere Fast by Girls at Our Best. 
and Linda Linda. Gosh, I think I just named like every song. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, and then I also really love um, the wrong song because I think they wrote it so beautifully. And I remember in the table read when I heard it for the first time, we had just gone through the whole movie and I was like all up in my feels. And I was just like bawling into tears. It was the first time I heard it. And it was just like, I felt so much for Beverly in that moment because, and my mom was just like on the side crying too. And we were just bawling together. And it was so sweet. Cause like the emotional significance, you know, you really, it's just like such a beautiful song. They did really good with it. And I love it. Yeah, that was awesome. Thank you. Tessa? Yeah, Gemma, I'd love to know what drew you to want to be a part of this movie. Oh, gosh. Um, well, I had actually already auditioned for this way back when, like before COVID. I was somewhat like 11, like super young. And then it came back around and I had remembered it and I fell in love with the script. I totally remembered it. It's very, very memorable. And I had a feeling I was so excited and, you know, something about the whole script and I love music personally. It has a big, it's very big in my life. So I thought it's so cool, like the perfect role for me. Like it's so cool that it's such a music driven movie. It's, it's very unique and I'd never read anything like that. And of course, like the girls, I've been acting for a long time and I've literally never acted with people my age before. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but it's usually just me and the adults, which I love. But um, that was really cool too. And those friendships with the girls were amazing. And Beverly, of course, she's an amazing character. And I think that the message of the movie can hopefully touch a lot of people, which I always love. Karen. Um, so I wanted to know what were um, each of your like most memorable scenes from the film? Oh, wow. Most memorable scene, um, I would have to say, oh, some of the harder scenes were really memorable because they were very, they were, they were difficult to do and to dig into and to do over and over for, you know, coverage. You got to move the camera around and do them again and again. So describing how, um, when, when Gemma's character asks about her mother and I have to describe her voice, um, and it was, it was really powerful to do together. And that was really hard um and for that reason it was memorable but then the, the final scene the y2k party was just fun it was just memorable because it was fun and when the fireworks started they were real and we knew they were going to be real but Jem and i were like oh, oh like genuinely like you know like those were real fireworks like i never sat where they had real fireworks it's crazy yes i have to agree with you on the y2k scene too because it was like the whole cast was there like everybody in the movie yeah. would really cool like a scene with just like everybody and we got to actually sing and actually play the guitar which was amazing and also the wrong song scene also was very memorable it was mm. fun and it was pretty fun <laughs> Carolina Hi, uh, Gemma, you mentioned acting, you know, with girls your age and and the friendships in the movie are kind of, um, you know, I think back in middle school, you know, how, you know, you just kind of are wondering who your friend is and, you know, who you want to be friends with and things like that. So how was it kind of like, again, if you can elaborate working out with them and working with that and what do you want girls your age to take from that friendship and that, you know, you can be friends with anybody. Yes, that friendship was phenomenal. I love the girls and the relationship that I have with them still, we text every day. I love them and um, that relationship that I have with them now, I'll never have that with everybody, with anybody else. It's very special. And I think that, you know, when you're yourself, you'll attract your people, if that makes any sense. And also, you know, you'll be kind to your friends and also, your vibe attracts good vibes, you know, you're, you're yourself, and then you'll get your perfect match. And, you know, things always come, you'll find your best friends, no matter if you're like, doesn't matter what age or where you are, you know, it'll come and you'll have your crew and they'll always support you. Amanda. Hi again. So my for Julie, I was told that you have a signature move and then I should ask you about it because I too have a signature move of doing the split. So I was wondering about yours. <laughs> oh, well, mine is not so very tasteful as the splits. I used to be able to do a split and now I don't know, I can't, no, just, just, just your basic stripper drop. 
you know, where you, you slap the floor and you kind of roll up. And um, I usually do that for comedic effect because I do not think of myself as A, a dancer, B, sexy, or C, a sexy dancer. So I would do that for comedic effect while wearing my postal uniform because I thought that was a nice contradiction. <laughs> You were dropping it like it's hot. Yeah, <laughs> everybody loved that. Hottest postal worker of all time. Yeah. <laughs> Kathy. Sorry, I'm still laughing. What was the one thing on set that um, were you able to take home? Was there some, or if you didn't take it home, what, what was it that you wanted to take with you to remember the set by? Uh, I wanted to take the postal worker hat. And I was a little bummed I didn't get to because I loved that hat. It was super cozy and I love hats. I have tons of hats of all varieties from like beanies that I make to big giant sun hats to every kind of hat. And that would have, that would have been a sweet addition to my collection. Oh, and Nick Thune, I would have taken him home, whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, and I remember, Julie, you knitted me the most amazing hat. It's my favorite hat in the whole world. It's the cutest. It's like a beanie oh. that has the two things here, and it says Beverly Mixtape. And it was like it's my favorite hat in the whole world. It was so sweet, and she made it. She is so talented. So oh. talented. Yes. And also, I got to keep the actual – I got to keep a lot of things. I got to keep um, the hat that I wear in the voyeur, the super cute my, – one of my favorite hats, too. It's burgundy with, like, the little feathers, and I actually got to keep – it's right there. I got to keep the actual cassette tape and the headphones and the mixtape and the song list. I have it all right there. And I probably um, – I actually got to keep the guitar from the – Oh, I didn't know that. At. I know that was very special. That's what my parents got me for my birthday. Um, I have it in a case right there. Here, let's see. Ba boom! Oh, there it is. Ba -boom. Ah. Yeah, that's so awesome. I got to keep that best present I've like ever gotten, and um, that was very exciting. And um, I love teal's like my favorite color, so I got. That guitar is like favorite, so that's from the concert, the Y two K concert, and it it actually works. I tried it. It works, which is so cool. So, yeah. That is very cool. Julie, Netflix, Netflix needs to get you the hat. Netflix should get me the hat? Yes. I, you, you, you said it. I didn't say it. No, they, I think they need to get you the hat. Perfect. Thanks, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but I think the hat, could, they could probably oh, work on it. Right. <laughs> it's, it's a compromise. There you go. Thank you. Donna? So Gemma, you mentioned that you guys got to actually sing and play there in that Y2K concert, which was fabulous. I totally remember that day, everybody thinking the world was gonna end and computers were gonna crash and all. So it was so much fun watching that party and, and, and dancing and Nick Thune and <laughs> all of that. And I was curious, um, do you normally, is singing and dancing or in, and making music and all, is that a hobby of yours or something that you did specifically for the movie? And can we see more of you in the future doing any of that? Oh, yes. And I have a little surprise coming. I'm going to release a Christmas single, hopefully this Christmas. I have been singing my whole life, and it's definitely something that everyone will be able to see in the future. And a little bit of dancing, too, hopefully some cool music videos and stuff like that. Um, so keep your eye out for that. It's called Happier Christmas, and that's going to drop soon. And um, I love to sing. That's definitely something that you guys will all be seeing in the future. Ah, oh, that's exciting. Congratulations. Thank you.